In this video, we'll learn how to create animations from sprite sheets in P5.js using the P5Play library. I've got a demo sketch open here where I've started to map out all the code that I'll need to insert a sprite sheet and show it on screen. So here's a preview of the sprite sheet that I'll be working with. And in a nutshell, a sprite sheet is a bunch of animation frames that have all been packed together into one big image. So you can see here, I've got about 180 frames of an animation of a laptop with a scrolling screen. So in P5, I've already gone ahead and uploaded that sprite sheet image into a folder called assets. I've also made a libraries folder, uploaded the P5 play library, and I've made sure in my index.html sketch to link that P5 play library. So I have access to the code. Back in sketch.js, I've done a little bit of work to set up the variables that I need. Uh, first thing we'll need is a variable to hold the sprite sheet image and the information that we'll need to use it. And that's basically the sizing of the grid as well as how many frames are in our animation. We've also got a variable that we can use to hold a standalone animation made from those frames. And that would let us play the animation, but it wouldn't give us access to some of the additional sprite object features that come with a P5 Play library, like collision and the ability to switch between different animation states. So if we wanted those features, we could instead make a sprite object and attach the animations from the sprite sheet to that object. So I've got options for all three of those here. Let's start out in our function preload block. And here we'll need to bring in the sprite sheet image, specify the sizing of the frames within the sheet and how many frames are in our sequence. So I'm gonna load this into the sprite sheet variable. So I'll just copy paste that. And then I'll use the load sprite sheet function to reference the sprite sheet image. So that's in our assets folder and it's called laptop sprite sheet .png. Now each of the cells in that sprite sheet grid are 128 pixels wide and 64 pixels high. And there are 179 frames in my animation from start to finish. So now all that information is stored in my sprite sheet variable. And next we could use that to create just a simple standalone animation. And I'll embed that in the sprite sheet animation variable by using the load animation function. And we'll use our sprite sheet variable for the argument. Now down in draw, we can show that animation using the animation function. And the arguments for that will start with the variable that's holding our animation and then we'll give an X and a Y location where we'd like to see it on screen. So that's kind of the simplest route that we have to go from a sprite sheet to an animation we can see in our sketch. Now, again, this is just an animation. It doesn't have any of the extra features that a sprite object would have. So things like collision, things like the ability to swap between different animations. So if we wanted to set that up in our code, we just need a few extra steps. Uh, I'm gonna use this laptop obj variable to be my sprite object. So back into my preload, I'll copy that variable name and then I'll use the create sprite function. And we'll give this a width and a height and I'll use the same size as my sprite sheet cells and then a location on the screen. Then I'll take that laptop OBJ, which is now a sprite object, and I'll use the dot add animation method. And here we'll need to give this a name. I'll just call this scroll. And then we'll specify the animation that we'd like to add, which is stored in our sprite sheet variable. So I'll just copy that right in. And then to see our sprite drawn to the canvas, I'll use the draw sprites function in the draw block. So there I can see that's my sprite object and I can comment out this standalone version to make it a little bit more clear. So 
pretty simple, not that much different from adding an animation that comes from a series of images. Sprite sheets do give you the advantage, however, of a little bit easier file management, as well as less memory usage when your sketch is running.